Hello everybody, it's day three of my three months tour of Europe and I'm heading to Auschwitz Birkenau. You know the bus goes through some of the most beautiful fields and farmlands and it's ironic that the place known for the most brutal crimes committed by mankind is surrounded by such peaceful and serene scenery now. Once you arrive, you go through this tunnel, which was just constructed and opened for the first time the day that we arrived. It's a weird feeling going through this tunnel. It feels like you're going through the belly of the beast. It's a quite surreal tour. Everyone is wearing headsets with the guides quietly explaining what happened. About six million Jews were exterminated across Europe during World War II. Millions of Polish people and hundreds of thousands of Roma and disabled homosexuals were exterminated. Here you see the famous sign which says, work will set you free which was not true because nearly everyone was exterminated. The visit takes us to Auschwitz 1 and Auschwitz 2. Auschwitz 2 is also known as Birkenau. Auschwitz 1 has been turned into a museum with exhibits. Auschwitz 2 is left largely in ruins the most emotional part of my visit was seeing the items that uh, Nazis collected. I'm not going to show the footages here because I think it's too gruesome. But they collected shoes, silverware, luggage, and hair. They collected hair to make socks for the soldiers. Is that showing? how evil they were or how desperate they were. Probably they were both evil and desperate. Seeing these items, especially the hair, really changed the mood for me. And I think it will have an impact for the rest of my life. I talked about this with other people from our tour and they had the same opinion. They were really moved when they saw all those possessions collected by the Nazis. It was really an emotional part of the tour for all of us. Another emotional moment for me was seeing the photos of all the detainees. Nazis photograph every detainee and you could see and feel their emotions in the photos they're speaking to us through their eyes you can see their anger the horror and the defiance after leaving Auschwitz 1 we got on our bus again to go to Auschwitz 2 known as Birkenau. It's only like a 10 minute bus ride there. The Nazis built Auschwitz II Birkenau because Auschwitz I was not big enough for them to process all their detainees. Birkenau is much bigger and it was mainly used as an extermination camp. When the Allies were approaching Birkenau, the Nazis tried to destroy it. And a lot of the, um, the cell blocks are in ruins. The extermination room has been destroyed. When you walk through Birkenau, you can see the sheer immense size of Birkenau and it's mind boggling. So you might be asking the question, why visit a place like this? We knew what happened. 
it's not going to happen again. Why don't we just destroy the whole thing and build something else over it? I think we visit a place like this to remember what happened and to honor the dead and those who suffered. That's the reason why I visited. The Nazi leaders were truly evil human beings who not only committed all these horrible atrocities, but they weren't remorseful at all. Even during trials, they were not remorseful. But I think the truly scary thing to consider is that there are equally evil sociopaths living amongst us right now. And they desire to get into leadership positions. They would love to get into leadership positions to commit acts of crime like this. These atrocities and genocides keep happening because I think humans are like herd animal. We want to follow the crowd, follow a leader. We have this overwhelming desire to follow the herd mindlessly, blindly. We are like sheep and sheeples. They did a study a few years back where volunteers were told to electrocute a test subject if they got the answers wrong to a question. Most of the volunteers continued to electrocute their test subjects when they got it wrong and they were told to increase the voltage higher and higher. Most kept doing this even when on the other side the person being electrocuted pleaded to stop, screamed but they kept on raising the voltage because there was a researcher telling them it's okay it's okay to do this and so they kept on raising the voltage until there was no more screams so the implication was that they died so most people went and electrocuted the other person with the highest voltage possible of course, the real test subjects in this experiment were the people doing the electrocution. The person being electrocuted was an actor. What does this experiment at Auschwitz-Birkenau show? It shows that these type of atrocities can be easily committed again. I think this is why we need to preserve these places. This is why we need to remember. Those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. We need to wake up and stay awake and not blindly follow our leaders or our government. Everyone needs to pause their social media, stop being distracted, and think. Look at what's going on in the world and think for themselves. I wanted to end the video in a hopeful note, so I was thinking, how can I end this video in a hopeful note? Well, all I have to do is show Krakow, Poland now. And it's a vibrant city lively city after being devastated by the war and the nazis it has rebuilt itself full of life krakow and poland shows us the resilience of humankind these are my thoughts and reflections thank you for watching